And out uh, surfing the internet the other day, I came across an article by James Lawrence where he uh, gave a buyer's guide for the 2013 season. And I uh, forwarded it to you, and I understand that a lot of that information came from you anyway. Well, that's true, Dave, and uh, we want to give kudos to Plane of Pilot Magazine and James Lawrence, the uh, LSA editor for that title. Plane of Pilot does a great job for the LSA sector, uh, one of the best, and is also one of the large circulation magazines out there with uh, great uh, readership in excess of 100,000, I believe. And so uh, kudos to both of them, and uh, thanks to their permission for letting us go through their list here, which we think will be a kind of a good way to summarize some of the top dogs. Uh, but first, another little shout out is that this assembly of information comes from the FAA database. It is taken from registrations when someone uh, buys an airplane and gets an N number for it that is registered with FAA. That's the source of this information. And plowing through a lot of difficult information uh, is, a is a job handled very well by Jan Friedrich. He's the a representative for the Czech Light Aircraft Association, and also my counterpart in Europe as Lama Europe's uh, executive director. So we'd like to make sure to say thanks for Jan for all his hard work over several years of assembling this very important market information that many people rely on. In uh, Jim's uh, article, he mentions uh, six new models that also debuted in uh, uh, 2012. Well, yes, he does, Dave, uh, but you know what? As good as Jim did on that, he left out a couple. So why don't we just sort of run through the list and we'll add in one or two that Jim didn't have. And I think we can give pretty good coverage. Uh, it'll be a little bit swift on each one because there's a good many of them to cover. He took the top 20 out of our uh, annual market share chart. And so these are the number one through 20 leading companies that have the most aircraft in the fleet. This doesn't necessarily re uh, re uh, relate to what they achieved in last year uh, or any previous year, but is the sum total of all their numbers. And again, this is registrations, not sales. And so where do we start? Well, let's start at the top. That's a good place. Let's do flight design. Flight design tops the list of registered LSA with 347 aircraft as of the time uh, that this assembly was done. That's about almost 15% of the U.S. sales. The highly regarded fuel-injected 912 IS engine is now part of the CT line that is their leading model. Flight Design continues to find ways to keep its products and image fresh and appealing. The new CTLSI engine airframe package meets the test with 21% drop in fuel consumption, smoother cold starts, and lower engine emissions. Also new, the CTLS Club, a lighter, simpler version of the CTLS Light. Flight Design's network of U.S. service centers is a model for the industry. The carbon fiber standard Rotec CTLSI and MC metal trainer continue to in the company lineup. Prices for the CTLSI, about $152,000 for the CTLS, just under $140,000, and the MC is actually at about $100,000, Dave. So it looks like uh, Jim, uh, Jim has uh, put Cessna as the number two in the line here. Well, he has, Dave, and that's for good reason. And in fact, uh, I've just assembled the 2012 market share report numbers, also by Jan Friedrich. And uh, that'll be coming out on ByDanJohnson.com uh, soon, probably as this video goes to YouTube. And uh, Cessna, again, like they did last year, led the 2012 performance. It was a little off from their 2011 performance, uh, but they've come way up on the list, and they are definitely number two. The Cessna 162 Skycatcher, now a primary aircraft, no longer an LSA. That's the plan, anyway. They're working on that right now. Cessna raised a few eyebrows when its Skycatcher's price went to $149,900. Primary aircraft certification will allow it to be sold in Europe once the certifications are approved. Sport pilot licensees may legally operate primary aircraft so long as they meet the same parameters of weight and speed and so on, uh, but can't exceed the limitations of the sport pilot license, and such as night flying and maximum altitude of 10,000 feet. And the aircraft must meet the definition of a legal LSA, that is 1,320 pounds, it's a land plane, Takeoff weight, top speed, 120 knots, which the Skycatcher still does. Let's move on to number three, which now is Cubcraft, another company that had a wonderful, well, they did very well in 2011. They increased that by 33% again for 2012. So they are 
uh, right on Cessna's heels and moving up the charts very steadily. And kudos go to Cup Crafters for finding a market niche and exploiting it about as well as anyone could. Cup Crafters by mid-year took over a third place on the strength of its torrid sales and production pace. But here the company had registered 28 aircraft, a quicker pace than in 2011, as I just noted, and led total numbers only was led total numbers only by Cessna. Its beautiful Carbon Cub SS and Sport Cub 2S continue to rack up sales. In max construction, a lot of use of carbon fiber, hence that name Carbon Cub, to keep weight down and to give it a fin highly finished look. Uh, contributes to a very nice appearance and appointments are just glorious. And all that helps explain its success. It's a list price, base price, $173,000. And I understand many of them go for upwards of $200,000, but that hasn't hurt their market a bit. Uh, for those that want to spend a little bit less, thirty-five thousand dollars. This is a Sport Cub 2S. So it looks like the uh, Czech uh, Sport aircraft is next in line. Yeah, here's a company that's uh, enjoyed quite a good run. It's true with Cessna's uh, upsurge in their deliveries and with Cub Crafters continuing to do great. Uh, Czech Sport aircraft model, the Sport Cruiser, also known as the Piper Sport, slipped back into fourth place, but that's hardly a setback for them. And in fact, their importer, U.S. Sport Aircraft, just signed a new agreement as the final three-year program with Piper came to an end. U.S. Sport Aircraft was continuing to deliver Piper Sports in stock and now will be delivering only Sport Cruisers. So this is a very stylish and easy-flying aircraft uh, briefly offered by Piper. And uh, they are nearing 190 registrations on the list right now, so a very substantial performance. They offer three models, including the sleek low-wing side-by-side cruiser with a variety of features. Their club tourer and a professional model round out the line of three models that they're making of the sport cruiser. And prices range from a very modest $119,000 up to $140,000, depending on the model and, of course, specific equipment that you might add to it. Following them, we come back to another Cub. We got a lot of Cubs at one time. I haven't done the numbers recently, but at one time, Cub-like aircraft accounted for about one in five special light sport aircraft that were registered. So a substantial performance. An American legend is part of that. In fact, having done the numbers for 2012, I see a resurgence for American Legend, which had a bit of a slowdown there during the sluggish economy. But American Legend continues strong with several new legend Cub SLSA and the Texas Star kit planes. They've uh, branched out into kit planes as well. And the new Super Legend adds a flat wing, which Cubs never had, carbon fiber components, and the new 115 horsepower Lycoming IO233 LSA multi fuel engine, meaning it can also use other than Avgas, uh, which is a nice opportunity for them. They also use the 200, 100 horsepower, and they offer the Jabru 3300A, which has 120 horsepower, which I've flown to find a very energetic machine. Uh, these engine versions are also offered uh, on all of their models. The prices uh, range from about $125,000 for an open cow legend cub. That's the one that most closely emulates the uh, familiar and uh, dearly loved Piper Cubs. Uh, then they've got a $129,000 closed cow cub. And the top of the line, the Super Legend with the bigger Lycoming engine, is $147,000. All these figures are in early 2012, of course. Next on the list is one of our uh, very great stalwart companies. They're doing great overseas, selling a lot of airplanes around the world. That's because they've got a large following around the world. I speak, of course, about Tech. Uh, and the venerable Italian aircraft producer, Tectum, has a new budget offering to really widen their line. They've got $75,000 fly away from Virginia in the U.S. P-92 Echo Classic Light. The structure is identical to all the P-92 airframes, which have been produced since 1992, making them more than a 20-year phenomenon of success in the light aircraft world. To save weight, a control surfaces, flaps, aileron, rudder, and stabilizer are fabric covered. This is a new thing for this all-metal producing company. The main gear and nose gear are P-92 identical, and smaller wheels and tires also help save weight. Technum has a deep fleet of quality LSA, the new P92 TD tail dragger, the P92 Sea Sky float plane, the sleek P2000 that I think is one of the prettiest in the fleet, and 
their most successful model in the United States, kind of surprised me as they did the numbers, is the P2002 Sierra, their low wing entry, and it has sold more than any other Technum single model. Uh, in addition, they've got the P92 Eaglet trainer. Prices range, as I said, from about $75,000 up to $158,000 in one of the LSA segment's largest fleets. Next on the list is one that has been a high flyer for a long time. That's Remos and their GX NXT model. Remos of Germany continues with three models of its superbly crafted smooth flying GX line, the GX Aviator 2, the GX NXT, and the GX E Lite. A variety of standards and options include German Era 510, the Dynon 7 inch Skyview EFIS the go-to EFIS for many LSA models, Dynon is everywhere in our world, the Dynon 100 and D120 EFIS, Garmin 696 GPS, and much more, and including a very handsome interior treatment that I've seen in their airplanes, really something to look at if you get to an air show and have a chance to do so. Prices range $120,000 to $140,000 with many options available. Jabiru, this is an Australian design but the U.S. company brings in kits from Australia, assembles them according to the ASTM standards, and is therefore the manufacturer with full control over the line. Australian manufacturer Jabiru holds on to eighth place in our list with two LSA, SLSA that have logged well in excess of 500,000 hours since 1992, an admirable performance by this company. The J230 SE, which is a 120 horsepower model, and this one is based on a four-seater kit in Australia. So it's the one that has, first of all, three doors, not two doors, but two passenger doors and a rear door and an enormous baggage area in the back. And it's matched with the J170, which was originally a two-seat kit. So it's a little smaller inside, but that means it can use the 80-horsepower Jabiru, the four-cylinder model. The 120-horsepower has six cylinders. And, uh, and therefore, this is one of the very few companies. Uh, we have another one, the Sonex kit company that also does engines. But Jabiru is a, just about alone in the fully manufactured world of making both airframes and the engine for it. The J170 is wide use as a, in a training role. Base price of the J230, that's the one with the large cabin area, is only $129,000. And the J170 is only $115,000, so no wonder they're selling well. These aircraft have some very nice prices. The Evector, and Evector always retains the distinction of being the very first SLSA to win approval way back in April of 2005. They continue along strongly and have continued a lot of development, one reason for their continued success. The Czech producer's latest model, the Harmony, a lovely airplane with a compound uh, leading edge to its uh, metal wing, optimizes their long pedigree of solid touring aircraft. All construction, as I mentioned, ex excellent cruise speed of uh, better than 110 knots, and an unexcelled inside and outside fit and finish make the Harmony worthy of a closer look. Uh, several fully certified models uh, under EASA standards. They're one of only three companies to achieve type certificate level in, in what's called the uh, CSLSA class. That's their version of the light sport class in Europe. And of course, in the U.S., uh, Evector is able and has in the past some IFR equipped versions. Pricing on that lovely Harmony uh, from their dealers around the country is $168,000. That's a loaded price and it is a deluxe airplane. You just have to see one at an air show to really get the full picture. But in addition, they've got priced options with the Sports Star model and those go down to about $120,000. So very competitive pricing from Evector Aerotechnique. Sport Air USA of Little Rock, Arkansas has uh, been an LSA provider and uh, has one for just about whatever kind of aircraft you want. They've got a, quite a full line there. The TL2000 Sting S4 low wing aircraft and they've got the TL3000 Sirius high luxury cruiser. These are impressive airplanes. They are backed up with another one from another company called the Zlin a very uh, storied airplane company in the uh, world of general aviation as well. And their Zlin iCub uh, which are, as Bill Canino, the importer calls it, a cub-alike airplane. They're made in the Czech Republic, as are the TL ultralight airplanes, and they include uh, the model called the iCub with a dot 
Apple iPad. They were one of the very first to uh, use that new Apple product as a uh, gen uh, an instrument for the airplane. Very intriguing. And now that, I'll have to add this, in the rear seat, it's a tandem aircraft, so the rear seat occupant uses an iPhone providing the same information, and the two devices talk to each other by an onboard wireless. Very, very high tech in a, an old vintage looking airplane, although it's one that has great performance. The popular, they also represent the popular array, and they represent the Dahl Air uh, F1, FR100 Snap, a fully aerobatic single seat SLSA or experimental exhibition air show built kit. Uh, that was not a specialty product, but it just shows the width and breadth of their line. Prices run from about $150,000 for the Sting S4, which is a highly deluxe aircraft, $151,000 for the Sirius, but the Zlin iCub is down in the below 100000 class, so they've got kind of something for everybody. Aerotrek continues to deliver fun-flying, affordable tube and fabric high-wingers to the U.S. market, and they're doing a great job of it, as I just mentioned. Manufacturing the Czech Republic, the Aerotrek A240 tricycle and the A220 tail dragger SLSA are muscular, that is 585 or 650 pound useful loads. Those are big numbers in any market. And they are folding wings, stand uh, flyers. They can easily go into a trailer and you can uh, either hang it in the trailer or take up less space in a right trailer or haul it around with you as you like very easily. And the whole wing folding mechanism takes just literally minutes and can be done by one person. More than 400 of these are flying worldwide and they are closing on the magic exclusive 100 club in the United States as they continue to move up the charts. They have numerous options, including uh, Dynon's wonderful Skyview uh, glass cockpit system, Tundra, tire, Tundra tires, and much more. And they have a well-equipped, and let's hear this again, a well-equipped price of, get this, less than $85,000. So, Take that, all you folks that think that there's no deals out there. There not only are good deals, and $85,000 is a very good price in any market for a brand new delivered aircraft, and they are selling them too. It's not a minimal choice airplane. It's one that's doing quite well. Next up on the list is LSA America. Now, here's a company that did something unusual. They took a Czech design. It was fantasy aircraft, and it's called the Allegro. And uh, they did very well initially, and then they had a slow point where things moved from the European producer to a now all-American produced airplane. They're in North Carolina. It's a com combination of composite and aluminum, a composite fuselage, aluminum wings, a great combination for repairability uh, and, and yet keeping the weight down as much as it can be. They've got three flavors, as Jim calls them, of the Allegro. It's the classic the Voyager, and the Executive, which kind of define what you might expect to find in the way of equipment on board, more and more equipment as you move up the price and uh, uh, quality scale there. Dual payload, I mean, of 580 pounds. Uh, this is a sturdy trainer in flight schools, and at least one of these has been through its third engine, and now they haven't had the third overhaul yet, but it's been through two overhauls at the 2,000-hour point. So they've got at least one airplane that's uh, sufficed in a flight school environment harsher environments you can find in aviation for more than 4,000 hours. To those folks who think these airplanes don't hold up, well, you need to think again because there's proof and proof alone. The executive model with the Skyview EFIS base deck um, is the, on the executive and prices run from only $89,000 for the classic, the one that might be used in a lot of flight schools, to the Voyager at $95,000, and the top of the line model is only $99,000, so less than hundred grand, and you get a lot of stuff on it. Hard to beat that price. Next on the list is another one with some very excellent pricing and another one to prove this not about all these airplanes are too expensive, and that's another home-brewed company called Rand. Had tremendous success in the kit field with more than 4,500, I don't think I'm overstating that, in fact, I might be low, 4,500 aircraft delivered. Uh, they're not quite on the heels of Vans Aircraft as one of the largest kit producers in the world, but they're certainly doing a great job. Rands has built top quality exotic bicycles as well, and so here's a company that does both bicycles, uh, but also aircraft, and they've been doing that for 30 years. Today, Rands has three SLSA models. The top line S19 LS Ventura, 
a low wing, all aluminum monocoque construction, a 2012 updated S7 LS Courier. That's a tandem seating, sort of cub-like looking airplane, but it's its own design, and it is one of the best flying LSA I've had the pleasure to fly. And then they have the very modestly priced S6 LS that's based on a former ultralight design, but has now been brought into the modern terms uh, of LSA. There are more than 2,000 S6s delivered, so they've had an exceptionally good run with this. They also keep the un Rans's unique hegemony in sport aviation. Price run for the S7 that I just told you I loved at about $108,000. The S6 and S19 are going through some revision, but the S6 has been down in the $70,000 range, somewhere in there. Of course, check with the company to find out more. S19 would be a little higher, perhaps in the $125,000 range. Currently, ICP has now taken over the reins from the former Sky Kits company, and the company has registered nearly 30 iterations of its Italian-built, stole capable stole is short takeoff and landing performance the savannah s and there are several variations of that model the all-metal high wing slsa sports a high lift naca air 650-18 airfoil and yunkers stock flapperons they have large window doors stall speed around 26 knots and yes i've experienced it to be that low and they use vortex generators in addition to the stole wing construction to give this airplane some amazing short field performance. So if you need to go in and out, here's a good choice for you. Prices are very modest. They range from $72,000 on the low end to a high end of around $100,000. And of course, as always, there are some specialty models that can bid that price up further. An FPNA, which stands for Float Planes and Amphibians, a Sebring, Florida-based company, uh, makes maximum benefit of their year-round lake-strewn home base, Jim writes, with his own air force of surf and turf light sport aircraft. Jim's a very colorful writer, and we appreciate being able to use his information here. I refer to Jim Lawrence, the LSA editor of Plane and Pilot magazine, whose information we're using today to give you this list. Uh, he is tied for 16th place in last year's report. We'll have new information for 2012, as just mentioned. And uh, one of the favorites that uh, Jim liked is the FPNA Cape Town float version of the A22 and the A22 A20 Vista tandem high wing pusher tail dragger. That's a lot of words in one phrase there. Uh, but some fascinating airplane coming out of a gentleman called uh, Yuri Yakovlev from uh, Aeropract in the Ukraine. These airplanes are built in Florida, and they have been through an FAA inspection, and FAA was satisfied with what they found, I was told. FAA has some very competitive prices, starting at $112,000. That's for a float-equipped Cape Town. That's a pretty remarkable price, and down to as little as $68,000 for the A20 Vista. So there's a company to keep an eye on if you're looking to save a few dollars. Then we move to one that was once described as a LSA standing for luxury sport aircraft. Now known as the Aero AT, we used to know this company as Gobosh, just to kind of connect some dots there. And Jim writes one of his favorite SLSA, well, which went out of business as Gobosh in 2010, but is back at the Aero, that's the Czech company that makes the airplane. And the model is now called the AT4. It's essentially the same airplane, and it's a lively, friendly, comfortable airplane. I'm sorry, not in the Czech Republic, but from Poland, made by Aero Limited. The all-metal bird is still flown as the G700 by Chris Dillis, the importer in Skyreader Aviation in Denver, Colorado. He's also one of the new investors, and Skyreader has enjoyed good success with this aircraft in two different training locations where they use it regularly as a trainer. Base price is listed at $106,000. Finally, we complete out our top 20 list, and certainly last, but not least, is another all-American design, an airplane I find one of the prettiest in the fleet. That's the Arian Aircraft LS-1. It's a popular carryover from the kit-built market, where they had great success, and they continue to sell experimental amateur-built, special light sport aircraft, and experimental light sport aircraft. So they're a company that does it all in the LSA space. And uh, the Arian LS-1 uh, 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 weds uh, spectacular streamlining to top-of-class performance. It uses the Jabiru 3300 120-horsepower engine to cruise right at the allowed limit of 120 knots and with a wonderful and spectacular back climb rate of 1,200 feet a minute. 
Uh, thanks to extremely smooth lines to this handsome airplane and a powerful engine. But get this, base price, about $99,000. So not only does it perform well and look terrific, it's got an excellent price. That concludes our look at the top 20, but as mentioned earlier, we can't leave out some up-and-comers and some other important models, so let's at least do a quick dash some of those starting right now. Okay, now that we're out of the top 20 world of fully built SLSA, that's special light sport aircraft, and these are all ready-to-fly factory-made airplanes, we need to include some that are not factory-made but are very important in the LSA sector. Leading that would be Vans aircraft. I've just looked at some numbers, as mentioned, for 2012, and Vans is now north of 200 aircraft delivered. Now, they're not all flying yet because these are kit airplanes. They made one SLSA because that's what's required, and then they are selling either ELSA or experimental amateur-built airplanes, and uh, those are kits. Of course, they have to be uh, built, and there's some hours in doing it. I think about 800 hours is taken. Uh, so there are more and more of them flying, and we're going to see more of these aircraft. It's a success story in the ELSA kit business, uh, thanks to the introduction of the RB-12 from Vans Aircraft. Vans has delivered thousands of experimental, uh, experimentally built GA kits over the years. I think they just crossed 8,000 kits delivered, I think, or maybe flying. I'm not sure which of those two numbers, but... And anyway, 8,000 is a big number for a kit company, and they are the leading producer that, in that realm. Hundreds of R12 ELSA kits create a demand for an SLSA version, and it's now in production. I said Vans wasn't producing an SLSA. In fact, they've done what is allowed under the LSA rules and contracted that out. And so a signature edition is priced at $115,000. But that's going to be ready to fly. It will have some limited production to it as the new company ramps up. But I think we should watch for much more from Vans Aircraft in their lovely RV-12. I've flown it, and it's just like all the RV airplanes. It's got tremendous handling and performance that any pilot can know. Then let's shift to another company that's done very well. They have SLSA products, but the focus on... The new Super Stole from Just Aircraft is bringing renewed attention to this company. They were not on Jim's list here, and I understand why, but we think it's a worthy model because we know that they're having good market success. And uh, they've now uh, introduced at last Oshkosh in the summer of 2012. People saw for the first time an airplane they subsequently named the Super Stole. And this airplane is, wow, it's just really quite something. Uh, this has a tremendous landing gear that can absorb a, a, a surprising amount of uh, impact. They've tested it from a four foot dead drop onto concrete. That's a very demanding test. It uses automatic two part leading edge slack. That means they're movable, but they don't move by a lever or any kind of uh, driven mechanism. They move by aerodynamic demand and there's an inboard and an outboard section. You have to see our video about this airplane to really understand it well, and then you can get the whole picture. But meanwhile, here's a company that's doing very well with some very good pricing. I don't have those numbers at hand, and in any event, they would be a kit for now. But I believe that you can look for a attractively priced Super Stole SLSA later on. Uh, main man at that company, Troy Woodland, told us that they are definitely working on that aircraft, uh, is a ready-to-fly aircraft. Now let's jump to something completely different, like they used to say on the old Monty Python show. We're going to a company now called Pittman Air, and this is really an aircraft we used to know from a company called uh, Moyes, which is a long, long time hang glider producer that also made a variety of powered aircraft as well. And they made one that is a specialty aircraft used to tow hang gliders aloft. It was designed exactly for this purpose. It's called the Dragon pretty apt name for an airplane whose job it is to drag another airplane into flying. And uh, those are hang gliders, of course, that are being pulled by it. It's long been reviewed as a workhorse. It's a purpose-built aero tow platform and for hang gliders and lightweight sailplanes. And it's offered with both the Rotax 5.2 and the Rotax 9.12, although the 9.12 version is still being certified. The Dragonfly comes as an SLSA or an ELSA kit in prices range from, get this, 
only less than $50,000, that'd be for the kit, to $81,000 for a ready to fly. That's with the 582. I expect that a 912 model would probably be about $90,000, but I'm kind of guessing there. Ed Pittman, the proprietor for going through the process of getting this thing SLSA approved. The reason why he did it, Moyes is an Australian company and understanding the ASTM rules while, it, while they do apply down in Australia uh, was something that they wanted to give to Ed Pittman, who's a very knowledgeable man. Uh, closing out the list before we get to some of what Jim calls prime contenders, and he means companies that are up-and-comers by that, um, is uh, another one that uh, is called the uh, Sling. And it's called this one is the Sling 2, and it's from the Airplane Factory in South Africa. Now, it's represented in the United States by an affable young South African who's been living in the United States for many years now. His name is Matt Lenitsky. And uh, he is representing the airplane that was designed by a famous uh, South African uh, designer and aerial pioneer named Mike Blythe, who has distinguished himself by several very significant flights. One that I just love their video they made of called South to South, meaning he flew, get this, from the tip of South America up through Central America, through North America, across the Atlantic, down through Europe, all the way down to Africa and back down. South Africa, so south to south, and this is a trip of, I don't know, I think it was about 40,000 kilometers. But that wasn't enough. He had to go fly around the world with his new partner, James Pittman, and they did that in the new Sling 2. And in fact, they did it shortly after they finished all the design work. Talk about confidence in your design. They did the flight in 40 days in 2009, and they've since repeated the flight, and they just can't stop long-distance flying. The U.S. representative, uh, the Airplane Factory USA, uh, offers ready to fly and kit form. In fact, they're working on the latter as we speak. And one standout is that this all-metal bird sports a hefty 38.6 fuel capacity. Sonics has been doing a wonderful job of kit building for many, many years. And uh, we have to admire this company. The other one I mentioned earlier in this video that makes both an engine and a an airframe, and they make both as kits. You can get a kit airframe, and you can get a kit engine. So you can get Sonics in the air, air for out-of-pocket expense only around thirty thousand dollars. Now you're gonna have to put quite a bit, quite a few hours of your own time into it. But if you're not putting a price tag on that, you can fly a Sonics for a very good price. Pipistro. Here's a company we've been hearing about more and more. In fact, the 2012 market share numbers show they are starting to come on very strong. They have some very lovely airplanes uh, reflecting the intense interest in sailplanes in Europe. And these things are some just composite beauties with compound wings that are just a thing of beauty to behold. Almost artwork, I would say. Uh, Pipistrel they their Alpha Trainer last year. And uh, as promised by company Dr. Ivo Boscarol, he's the head designer and head, head of the entire company, uh, based in Slovenia, but with Italian production facilities, and that's where U.S. light sport aircraft models are made. The Alpha came out with a mid $80,000 price tag, and 10 orders were taken almost immediately in the U.S. I've heard information since Jim did his report, and they continue to sell well around the world in addition to the U.S.A. The company has uh, several world beater all composite light aircraft, including the electric or gas powered self launching Taurus two seat glider and the very lovely high Cenus motor glider plus the Virus LSA. Pipistrel's trademark super efficient bullet closed airframes yield spectacular performance, impressive handling, and superb economy, writes Jim. The, economy, the company has produced a thousand worldwide in 25 years. It's a major player with big surprises coming in the future. Prices of the Alpha Trainer start at less than $90,000, and that's pretty well equipped, and they go up from there depending on which of the other models you choose and what equipment you put on them. It's called the Bristel. This is uh, designed by a man that uh, had a lot to do with this. The Sport Cruiser back first came out, and uh, he's back out with his own company. The Bristel is a top quality addition to the U.S. SLSA market, Jim writes. Built in the Czech Republic by BRM Aero, the nose-to-tail refinements in this airplane are obvious from at a first glance. Designed by Milan Bristella, he is a design contributor, as I said, to the Sport Cruiser, but also to the Evector Sport Star. 
This 617 pound useful load and 700 nautical mile range airplane just provides icing on the cake of a very handsome design. And its handling qualities, I heard from several other reporters beside myself, described as superb. And I have to agree with that. Only $125,000. Then let's move on to another one with a great price and a great credential in the uh, flight instructor market, and that's Kit Fox Aircraft, another all-American design. And the enduring Kit Fox design continues as a major presence in light sport, affordable flying with the Super Sport SLSA and other kit versions. More than 5,000 variants have been delivered over the years. Another very substantial kit company. Uh, everyone in aviation pretty much has heard of the Kit Fox in one form or another. If that country stole short, take, short takeoff and landing performance are on your list, along with a tasty appointment list and a fast 107 knots, don't overlook the Super Sport. It's a long-established winner and base price around $100,000. Again, take that you that think there's not a good price in light sport aircraft. Kit Fox Aircraft has got one. From World Aircraft Company, Aircraft Company introduced at Oshkosh in 2011, the Spirit is a high-wing all-metal SLSA. It was originally designed and built in Colombia, but now all that production is coming to the USA. In the design and named Max Tedesco continues to support it with continuing refinement. Is there is roomy in width and overhead space. It's a very large aircraft inside, as that phrase implies, and comes at a very attractive price tag of only one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Fully built kit versions cost less than half of that. It's a way to save some money, and it's also a way for the owner to be able to make changes later on and to do his own maintenance. Find out more from the company about those options for you. We've got many new seaplanes come to the market that it's just kind of baffling, and I'd like to run through a few of those real quickly for you. Uh, first of all, it's had the SLSA approval long than anybody is the C-MAX, a beautiful Brazilian-built all-composite amphibian, and with aggressive representation in the United States, price is about $150,000, but remember for seaplanes, these values uh, tend to be higher because of the cost of amphibious gear and so on. At $150,000, C-MAX is actually pretty well priced. But they'll be challenged by a new entry that just won SLSA approval just in the last few months. That's the C-Ray, another all-American built right here in my home state of Florida, not far from where I live in Tavares, Florida, where the company is located. They've been delivering kits for more than 20 years now. They just celebrated their 20th anniversary uh, uh, several months ago, and uh, this company has over 600 kits, over 500 of which are flying, and uh, you talk about a bunch of owners that love their airplane. Sea Ray owners are certainly high among them. Now you'll be able to buy a fully built model, but you better get in line quick because there's a few people waiting for one, and they're only going to be able to build a limited number as they ramp up production, so call the company soon. But we've got a couple of others that are worthy to mention. One of those is the Spanish Freedom uh, that is a, uh, a high-wing amphibious, long-winged float plane from uh, Spain. And that aircraft now has new U.S. representation. We'll be looking for it. We've got some video about it. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com or on the Ultralight News YouTube channel. In addition, I want to mention Super Petrel LS, a company out of Brazil, like C-Max, and their airplane is just arriving in the United States and just working on SLSA approval, but we don't want to keep your eye on that one is Jim Lee's Phoenix SLSA motor glider. This is Phoenix Air and Phoenix Air USA, and he has just had an excellent year, I have to say. In uh, 2012, the numbers are showing that he comes in tied for number five in deliveries, and this is for a specialty aircraft, what's called a motor glider. Comes with two sets of wings. Well, there's just a lot to say about it, but let me give you Jim's view of it. He calls it the king of sleepers in what you might consider a niche category, the Phoenix motor glider. Lee has quietly KO'd the 109 SLSA competitors below the top 20 with an impressive 20 sales and so far 10 deliveries of the fabulous Phoenix Motor Glider. Uh, Jim, like myself, is a, motor, is a soaring enthusiast, and so we are quite taken by this very, very lovely airplane that Jim Lee is representing out of uh, just down the road here from me in Florida. The Phoenix goes for north of $150,000. But motor glider and motor soaring pilots get more than their money's worth out of this long leg beauty. Just like a seaplane, a motor glider tends to be a little higher cost. So Jim's price, all north of $150,000, really aren't bad for the category and are far less 
than many other motor gliders that you might buy. In addition, uh, Jim Lawrence likes to reference in his plane and pilot review of Lightsport Aircraft the newly renamed Skyreach. It was formerly known as the Rainbow Aircraft, and their Bush Cat was formerly known as the Cheetah. This is a very low-cost airplane, under $50,000 base. So once again, folks that think there's no deals in Lightsport Aircraft, you got to think again. Here's a great example. And another, the Air LS which is another budget bird at less than $60,000. These are both ready to fly airplanes. So rethink your thoughts. All these LSA are just too expensive. Not true at all. Another one that deserves mention, they now based at the Sun and Fun campus is Breezer Aircraft. They're one of the first SLSA, the all metal German Breezer II, remains a worthy competitor, Jim writes. A well-designed beveled avionics panel goes with solid handling and aluminum skin monocoque construction at about $125,000. I've flown this airplane to and from uh, the Bahamas and found it to just be a joy to fly. And its proprietor, a man generally known as Mike Z, is a fine man who knows a lot about light sport and can help you with training too. If you're in Central Florida, contact Breezer Aircraft. Another one we like to mention because we think they're doing a fine job, the Corby Air. The Corby Air Alto 100 all-metal low-wing SLSA has been yankied up, Jim calls it, meaning, meaning Americanized for U.S. consumption, and is a highly refined version from its European origins. Impressive features include air conditioning and Dynon avionics, priced at about $127,000. That's the top-of-the-line cross-country version. He's got a $115,000 pro trainer and a hundred and five thousand dollar flyer that's from ron corby of corby air a company with about 50 years of experience in this business so people you can rely on another company we like to mention is the fk light planes airplanes they uh, they just uh, taken the uh, aviation community by storm with their gorgeous f-12 comet aerobatic airplane with the biplane folding wings now you don't often hear about biplanes with folding wings now equipped with the Lycoming AEIO 233 LSA fuel injected engine, it's capable of air flight. Represented in the United States by Hanson Air Group, that also offers other FKL, FK airplanes and the wonderful Sky Arrow plus more LSA. The FK 12 is about $128,000, although we don't know if that includes the Lycoming price. Get more from Hanson Air Group to find out details. When we mention Hanson Air Group, we have yep. to mention one of our favorite organizations. This is called Able Flight, and they're a company that helps disabled persons, uh, many of them uh, U.S. war veterans with various uh, disabling injuries they sustained in that conflict. And Hanson Air Group has supplied the Sky Arrow with hand controls to Able Flight, which has done a wonderful job of giving scholarships to people who have various disabling qualities that and have been able to achieve no less than 20 sport pilot certificates for these folks. So big shout out to Able Flight for their wonderful work at helping uh, uh, disabled vets and other people fly and learn how to be repairmen and for Hanson Air Group for supporting that wonderful work. Uh, you can donate as I do to Able Flight and you can find them on the web as well, of course. Now let's jump to another company that has been doing lots of stuff. This is Renegade Light Sport, and they again are in the uh, news, or going to be in the news, because they are moving from their location in Missouri down to Florida, where they acquired new facilities. Renegade's dock has tons of irons in the fire, writes Jim, and I have to agree with that. He's kind of, I don't know how he track thing he's doing, but he's doing a lot of stuff. And he is the man who has done a lot of the work to certify and get installed the Lycoming 0233 on the FK-12 Comet. And he's got more ideas up his sleeves. But he also has the Falcon LS. That's a composite low-wing aircraft that's priced at only $139,000 with the Lycoming engine on it. Look for more out of Renegade Aircraft. Finally, in conclusion for this article, and again, we've mentioned every single company. Apologies to those we've left out, but... Uh, short of making this a five-hour video, it's impossible to touch on everyone. But here's a couple we want to focus on because they've been getting lots of attention. And that is perhaps this year, Jim writes, we'll finally see Terra Fugia's transition, the rotable aircraft, they call it. And currently in, t in test, projected to cost $279,000. Now, that's a lot of dough. But here's an airplane and a car 
and it's going to meet SLSA standards for aircraft, and it meets the federal highway standards as an automobile, not a kit car, but a full automobile. Uh, can't wait to see more from that and the brain trust up there in Massachusetts that produces the Terrafugia transition. And finally, uh, the long-delayed but highly anticipated and gorgeous Icon A5. Uh, just some of the many, many airplanes in the LSA space, over 130 models to choose from, the greatest flowering of innovation design in the history of aviation. We're pleased to give you this fast-paced review of everything that's available. Once again, thank you. James Lawrence, the LSA editor of Plane and Pilot magazine, one of our favorite print pubs. Thank you so much for watching today. You can find lots more about these aircraft, including our list of all of those airplanes on bydanjohnson.com. That's bydanjohnson.com, where you can see stories and lots and lots of videos. Uh, we welcome your visit there or stay with us here on the Ultralight News Channel. Keep watching and thanks for doing so today.